whichever way you judge me has absolutely no impact on me because I'm completely stoned. <laughs> so I have not given this privilege to anybody that somebody can make me happy, somebody can make me unhappy. Any moment we could be doing something wrong, so we listen to everybody. But what they say will not determine how I am. So my question is, whether it is alcohol or not, in life, why are we so apprehensive about being judged by others? And how can we not let this come on our way of being happy? <laughs> Look at me. See, I'm always stoned. Never touched a substance, but always stoned. You can judge me whichever way you want <laughs> Because one thing is, I am stoned in such a way that I have not lost my judgment at all. And at the same time, whichever way you judge me, has absolutely no impact on me because I'm completely stoned <laughs> Having said that, why this consumption of alcohol and drugs is growing the way it's growing in the world is, this is because the heavens have been collapsing. Yes. I was in Bangalore just uh, three, four weeks ago. There were over eight thousand people doing a two-day program with me. And just casually I asked, how many of you think you will go to heaven? Only five hands went up <laughs> Then I asked, are you all the hell people? <laughs> no, it's just that both heaven and hell have collapsed in people's minds. This is the first time in the history of humanity that this many people in the world can think for themselves. Otherwise, your priest, your mullah, your pandit or a book was thinking for you. The first time that so many people can think for themselves. Or they're thinking right, thinking wrong, there are many issues about that. But they're thinking right, thinking wrong, but they're thinking. So all illogical things are naturally collapsing. Still, this generation has not fully walked away from it, still there is fear. They can't openly say, there is no goddamn hell or heaven. They're still fearful about it, but they're trying to make a little heaven for themselves here. So, hey, wait, wait, wait <laughs> So naturally, when they're not able to do it for themselves, out of their own intelligence, they will fall back on chemicals. Today, just to take very affluent societies because every society is aspiring to be like that, let's say you take United States which is the most affluent nation on the planet right now. Seventy percent of US population is on prescription medication. Another thirty percent of course buying it off the back streets. Most affluent nation Obviously, affluence is not working. To be healthful, you need chemicals. To be joyful, you need chemicals. To be peaceful, you need chemicals. To be ecstatic, of course, <laughs> that is ecstasy. So, I'm not even looking at it morally. It's, it's ne never a moral issue for me. If ninety percent of this population right now is chem on chemicals, Believe me, the next generation that we produce will be a generation which is much less than us. If we produce a next generation less than ourselves, we have committed a crime against humanity because the next generation must be at least one step ahead of us, otherwise we've lost it. We've lost the entire process of civilization when we produce a next generation which is actually less than us. So, we are heading towards this rapidly. 
unless we teach individual human beings how to simply sit here and be blissed out. Stoned enough or no? Just look at me. <laughs> but am I… am I conscious enough, alert enough, clear enough? If there was a way to intoxicate yourself without losing your judgment, without losing your awareness, without losing your intelligence, it's a great thing. Intoxication is a fantastic thing. Only problem is it takes away your judgment, it takes away your intelligence, incapacitates you. That is the problem, isn't it? Is it true? Ask anybody, you're not in the medical sciences, but ask anybody, is it true that this body here is the greatest chemical factory in the universe right now, the universe that we know at least, hmm? Only problem is you're a lousy manager. If you know how to manage this, you would be like me, always blissed out. Anybody can say what they want, anybody can do what they want, this is like this only. Because I have not given this privilege to anybody, that somebody can make me happy, somebody can make me unhappy, somebody can make me miserable. Right now, you are a consequence of other people's opinions. Where do you plan to go like this? Anybody can ruin you. You went outside, somebody told you, Shreya, you are the most wonderful human being we have seen. Then you were flo floating on that cloud, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, what number? What number? Seven. Nine. Oh, in south we do eleven. <laughs> you were floating on cloud whatever number and you came home, people at home told you who you really are <laughs> and the cloud will crash. No, no. It's very important that neither this way or that way, we listen to everybody because we could be doing something wrong. Hello? Any moment we could be doing something wrong, so we listen to everybody. But what they say will not determine how I am, never, ever. This you must fix and you must tell your friend when she's not drunk <laughs> because otherwise she won't understand.